So here we're now looking into climate. And for this aspect, we look at factors affecting climate. The major reason is if you do not understand perfectly the factors affecting climate, it will be very difficult for you to look at desert and equatorial climate because it, will, it is with these factors we are going to look at their individual characteristics and formation. So quickly, even before you understand these factors, you need to understand the lines of latitude. So the parallel lines of latitude are important for you to know in order to understand the factors affecting climate. Now, so beside the equator, which is zero degrees, not zero degrees, the North Pole is 90 degrees. So here at the North Pole is 90 degrees. And the South Pole too is also 90 degrees south or 90 degrees north. Um, there are four important lines of latitude you need to know. So here is the equator, which is uh, zero degrees. Okay. Now, uh, first line you need to know is the Tropic of Cancer. The Tropic of Cancer is 23 and a half degrees north. Uh, the Tropic of Capricorn is 23 and a half degrees south. Then we have the Arctic Circle, which is 66 and a half degrees north. So this is Arctic here. Uh, we have the Antarctic Circle, which is 66 and a half degrees south of the equator. Now, the area that received the maximum heat are called the torrid zones. So what that means is this area around the equator between 23 degrees north and south of the equator is referred to as the torrid zone. So here it receives maximum heat receive maximum heat then we have the areas that receive the least heat is referred to as the frigid zones so this is now the frigid zone which is between 90 and 66 and a half degrees north and south of the equator so these two areas receive the least heat. So that's what we need to know now. Now, um, so the areas that receive moderate heat is referred to as the temperate region, which is between the Tropic of Capricorn and Antarctic region, and also the Tropic of Cancer and the Arctic region. Now, one thing you need to know is this. Climate vary across the world and factors that alter temperature and precipitation of a region can alter their climate. What that means is anything, any factor, any factor that can affect temperature, any factor that can affect temperature, any factor that can affect temperature and precipitation which is also the precipitation are your rain your snow your hay anything that can affect this too can affect climate so when we look at factors affecting climate we are looking at factors that affect temperature and precipitation so take note about that so if you are asked to differentiate between the climate of an equatorial region and a, a, a desert ecosystem what you should be looking at is those things that affect the temperature and precipitation of those areas that lead to that characteristic so the factors that affect climate include one latitude we just looked at line parallel line of latitude and we mentioned areas that have high heat and low heat and high and actually moderate now so you see if this is the equator and let me let me try to include a mini diagram here i have the earth and the sun is directly overhead so you find out that at at and near the equator sunlight hit the earth directly so if these are sun rays coming you find out that sunlight hits the earth directly at the equator now delivering more heat and light at any given spot so here 
because it receives more heat and the heat is direct at the equator you find out that here we have a high temperature now towards the poles the sun rays hit the earth at an oblique angle and are spread over large area diffusing their energy making this area to receive less heat and if an area receives less heat that means the temperature here will be low while here the temperature is very high so it's the same thing this diagram is trying to depict so the sun is directly overhead at the equator so it hits the equator directly it directly delivers heat onto the equator making this area to receive high to have a high temperature while here the at the poles the sun rays meet the earth at an oblique angle and is spread across a large area, making this area to have low temperature. That's latitude. Now, next is pressure systems. Now, areas usually affected by low pressure, such as the equator, have rising air. Now, so this equator have is a low pressure belt so equator has low pressure why the tropics tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn in this case have high pressure high pressure so the concept you need to know is area with low pressure air rises so this area have low pressure around the equator and remember it has a high temperature so low pressure so as the pressure is low it makes air to rise so as the air rises they condense to form rain so areas with low pressure usually experience high rainfall now so the air around the tropics because it has high pressure the air what sinks so here you have sinking air in the tropics now, because the air sink, it does not lead to what? Condensation. Because condensation can only occur when the air rises. So because it does not lead to condensation, within this region, you now have low rainfall. So within the equator here that has low pressure, around the low pressure belt, you can have rainforest because of high rainfall and high temperature. But within the tropics, um, that have high pressure belt, you now have low rainfall you, and also a desert ecosystem there. This is it. So areas of low pressure, air rises, condenses and lead to high rainfall. Areas with low pressure, that's areas with low pressure. Areas with high pressure, air condenses. Sorry, sorry. Air sinks, it does not condense, so it comes down. Air sinks, it doesn't rise, and leading to what? Low rainfall because no form of condensation will take place. I think this diagram is still trying to depict it. So you see areas here have high pressure. Areas here have low pressure. So air here rises. As it rises, it condenses and falls as rain, leading to rainforest. But areas here air sink it doesn't rise so because air sinks here we now have desert because of low rainfall okay that's it about pressure belt next is altitude i explained this altitude when i was explaining types of cloud or reason for the formation of cloud now the distance above sea level is the altitude the distance above sea level so the e the increase in altitude lead to decrease in temperature so the higher you go the cooler it becomes so you can see here that as you move up the temperature decreases when it was zero degrees zero meters in altitude it was three de 30 degrees celsius when it is 100 1000 it reduces to 23.5 so as you move up there is decrease in temperature so at the top of the mountain here you can see that there are snows because the temperature is really low now altitude also how can altitude lead to the to rainforest and desert formation note this is a past paper question now simple the air mass rises on the windward side so this is the windward side 
and so the air rises so it picks up pick up moisture now so as the air rises the higher you go the cooler it becomes so what happened the air expand and it what it cools so as it moves up the mountain within the windward side it cools to form cloud the cloud will grow into large size and now fall around the windward side leading to rainforest here the windward side now so saturated air mass precipitation on the mountain forming a rainforest then within the leeward side this is the leeward side what happens is that the air descend as the air descend there is no moisture in it so as it descend it will now heat up the leeward side now heating up the leeward side no condensation takes place no rainfall is taking place around the leeward side leading to the formation of a desert ecosystem here so leeward side desert windward side rainforest now the next one here is continentality which is the distance from the sea so location that are further inland heat up more quickly in the summer and cool more quickly in the winter so you find out that areas that are distant away from the sea tend to experience higher temperature than areas that are close to the sea. That's what it means. Then lastly, we have ocean current, please. So there are two major types you should know, which are the warm current and cold current, which circulate the ocean, either warming or cooling the adjacent land. So you find out that earlier we talked about pressure um, uh, la la lines of latitude and we said the equator receives the highest amount of heat. So this line here is the equatorial line uh, around zero degrees Celsius. And since it is a low pressure belt, uh, it has a high temperature. Now, because of this, you find out that the currents here are usually warm current. And warm currents tend to move away from the equator and it comes with heat. So it helps to warm the adjacent land and lead to rising air. So you see, cold currents lead to cold temperature and therefore less evaporation because it cannot hold moisture leading to low rainfall. So areas with the cold current, like the high pressure belt, have cold current. Uh, so you find out that those areas have low rainfall because cold current cannot pick up moisture. But however, warm current around the equator will lead to high temperature so because there is high temperature, there will be more evaporation. So air will hold moisture leading to high amount of rainfall within those regions. That's it. Then aspect. So this is the direction a terrain faces in the northern hemisphere slope. Uh, so areas forming, uh, facing the southern parts in the northern hemisphere tend to receive more sunlight and high temperature within those areas, but areas facing north in the northern hemisphere usually low temperature so prevailing wind wind we've talked about ocean currents now wind so wind coming from warmer areas bring warm air therefore increasing the temperature but wind that comes from um, a cold area does does not do that so you find out that wind that blows across the ocean has more moisture leading to higher rainfall but wind that blow across dry land have low moisture, therefore no rainfall. Take note about that. That's it. Those are the factors. So the next class, we're going to look at equatorial and hot desert climate using the characteristics of factors we just discussed.